it. He said, He wandereth abroad for bread, saying, Where is it? He knoweth that the day of darkness is ready at his hand. Trouble and anguish shall make him afraid. They shall prevail against him as a, as a king ready to the battle. For he stretcheth out his hand against the Most High. And strength yeah, Esau, the so-called white man. That's why the so-called white man got them space stations they're trying to set up. They're trying to set up these. They, well, back in the, the 80s, Reagan had set up that Star Wars program. They trying to come. They trying to increase. They have increased their technology to so-called try to fight against the angels when they come back and those chariots, those UFOs. Esau thinks he gonna fight against the Most High himself and win, which he gonna be he gonna be crushed, man, badly. And strengtheneth him, strengtheneth himself against the Almighty. That's why they've been coming up with all this technology, cause they know the so-called elites know that those UFOs are. That they know. That those UFOs that they make movies and documentaries about are the, ch are, are the vessels that the angelic forces fly around in, man. Okay, they know that. That's why the white man has been so big on increasing their technology and their weaponry. They already have laser guns and all that type of shit because they think they're going to fight against those so-called UFOs when they come back. Yeah. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 68, verse 16. And I'm going to tell y'all something. All those expeditions that Esau took up into outer space, Neil Armstrong and all them astronauts, uh, they had documents where them guys actually gave reports that they saw the UFOs and they saw black men, big black men come out of those, uh, with, with afros, come out of those, uh, those uh, vessels or those ships. Okay? So they know who it, who it is and what it is. That's why they've been fighting so hard to bring in that Star Wars program. Back in the 80s, Reagan was really signing off on that big time. Okay? To try to fight against the, the Lord, uh, Yahweh Shah, when he come back. That's right. Psalm 68 and 16. That's why Obadiah says, The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. Talking about Esau, man. Esau is deceived. This devil thinks he's going to actually defeat the angelic forces, man, of Yahweh Yahweh Shah. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which the Most High desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The yeah, like that G20 summit. The word summit means what? A peak of a mountain. So that's all that G20 summit, all them nations coming together and deciding they're going to do this and they're going to do that. That's an example of them leaping. That's an example of them high hills or high hills. Go ahead. Okay, that's, it. that's right. It says, it says, yea, the Lord, the, the Lord. the scenery. Okay, no problem, bro. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. The chariots of the Most High are 20,000, even thousands of angels. Man, that's an innumerable amount of chariots. What's that? Them UFOs, them spacecrafts, man. And when they come, they're going to come like locusts, man upon this place and when the missiles are dropping then chariots of the, the the angels they're gonna be shooting laser beams and zapping people it tells you that in the apocrypha man when it talked about yahweh shy the mountain that he came in and then it said that uh when his breath went out that was talking about a lady the chariot or the ship that yahweh shy is gonna shoot a giant laser beam out like that movie independence day showed you yeah well that's why it tells you in the book of revelation one and seven that every eye shall see Yahweh Shai. What are they going to see? They're going to see them chariots. Because those chariots are going to cover the whole world. All right? On the day that Yahweh Shai comes back. And like he said, them chariots are going to be uh, shooting laser beams at different, you know, uh, uh, targets. targets. You know, military installations. Yeah, like the movie The War of the Worlds. The, the first one, the original one from the 1950s. Something like that scenario. That's what's going to happen, man. Uh, Independence Day. Yeah, and for them elites to make that video, or so-called elites like Elder Ricard says, that shows you they know the truth. All right, they made that video way video. They made that movie way back in 1951. And by the way, in that movie, if you get it on uh, VHS, um, when you pause it, there's, there's a scene where the the you know the the hero of the movie runs into a, a church for sanctuary from them uh, chariots attacking the town. And uh, he runs in there, and there's a stained glass window of uh, uh, what looks like Jesus Christ. And do you know what color it is? Black. All right. If you if you the, uh, it's an icon, one of those mosaic icons. And if you pause it, you can clearly see a man with woolly hair, like an afro, and dark skin. 
and that's supposed to be Jesus Christ, which we know his name is Yahweh Shai. So, way back in 1951, they knew, man. The elites know. They know what's going on. Yeah, like, what's his name? Cecil, what's his name? Cecil B. DeMille's. He made that movie, The Ten Commandments. You're going to tell me he don't know that those people that he portrayed in the movie were all people of color, man. Okay, they were people of color, brown-skinned people, so-called blacks, Native Americans, and so-called uh, what you call blacks, Native American, and Hispanic. Those were the 12 tribes, man, and he knew that. Yeah, to back up what you were just saying about Cecil B. DeMille's, he had a number of books. He had the Bible. He had when you when the opening uh, of the movie, the intro of the movie, they said that these are the books that we use to get the records. They mentioned the Josephus. They re, uh, they mentioned the uh, uh, Philo. That was another book. And uh, they mentioned a couple other books. And then they mentioned the main book, which is the Holy Scriptures. Now in the movie, he had uh, Charlton Heston, uh, so-called Jew, uh, play uh, uh, Moses, the lead character. But he had uh, the um, he had uh, uh, Joshua. Uh, which was the uh, second in command. Um, he was a leader after uh, uh, Moses had passed. Uh, he was from the tribe of Ephraim, and they got a, a actor that looked just like an Ephraimite. So they put a little truth in there. But Esau is not the one to bring out the whole truth. Okay? That's right. He's the devil. They're going to lie to you. That's why they got Heston. And then even the damn Egyptians were white people with uh, copper tone on, man. Okay? All right, going back to the article, it says, President Putin on Friday quoted his South African counterpart as saying that the world's smaller countries feel increasingly increasingly vulnerable and, and insecure with the notion that a more powerful nation can at any time and at its own discretion use force against them. In, in this regard, a military strike outside of the UN Security Council resolution would set a dangerous precedent, Putin warned. The use of force on a sovereign state is only possible if it is done for self-defense. And as we know, Syria is not attacking the U.S. or under a decision made by the U.N. Security Council. As one participant in our discussion said, those who act otherwise put themselves outside of the law, Putin said. Right. Now, that's beautiful that Putin said that because... Um, the so-called president of the United States, which is a big joke, is Barack Obama. Now, it's a known fact that uh, he's a constitutional lawyer. That means he specializes in the Constitution. He deals with constitutional issues. So uh, a first-year law student knows that that's clearly unconstitutional. Because, number one, Congress declares war because they represent the masses of the people. And number two, when you read about the, 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 uh, the, the Navy, all right, and you read about standing armies for no more than two years, okay, because you got a standing army in this country, the U.S. Uh, army is not supposed to be an ongoing army. It's supposed to be assembled from the, uh, the uh, uh, militia which are men from the ages of 18 to 25. That's why they draft, draft you at the age of 18. They have you uh, register at 17 so they can draft you at the age of 18 if there's a draft because th that represents the militia. Any m male of Amer um, American citizenship or, or about to be American citizen or wants to be American citizen and they're a resident uh, in this country from the ages of 18 to 25, that's why they, they draft you from those uh, years, because that goes back to militia. And, the, and, and, that, and that militia is formed into an army, a standing army, for no more than two years, because they said a, year, a, a war wouldn't last no more than two years. All right? Now, the, the, the military uh, and the Navy, that's the only thing that's standing, is the Navy. All right? Um, the only time they're able to attack another nation is to repel the attack from that other nation. In other words, it's defense. You're not supposed to be ag the aggressor. You can't say, well, did you see all those kids that were killed by that uh, sarin gas? We got to do something about that. But is that constitutional? No, it's not constitutional. And Barack Obama knows that. But like I said earlier, the reason why they're doing that is because 
the most high is putting it in their spirit.